I'll just take uh, some time now to show some new features in T-Spines version 2.2. And the first new feature, Kyle um, used a, a little bit of this in his demo, but it's called the uh, the bridge feature. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to make a, a T-Spline cylinder primitive. And uh, I just have 5 by 25 faces. And now to... There's actually another new tool I'll be showing as well. It's the append face tool. Now this tool's been around for a while, but the new thing is that you can make a face that's not connected to an existing T-spline surface. So I'm just drawing um, a triangle in the middle of of my scene, and this is now this is a triangular T-spline surface. It's flat, so I can use the T-spline thicken command to add some give this some thickness. And you can see now it's a smooth T-spline with a triangular face on top and bottom. And now what I'll do is I'll go to box mode. And Kyle is showing how you can hit tab or you can use this icon to do the smooth toggle to go to box mode. I'll turn on my heads up display. And now to, to use the bridge command, you can bridge both edges and faces. So to bridge faces, I'll enter the command here. Here's the bridge command. Select this face select this face and hit enter. You can see it gives me a preview of how that bridge will look. And I can change the number of segments added in the bridge, so I'm going to change that to five segments, and then hit enter. And now if I hit tab to go back to smooth mode, you can see that it's created a column between this surface and the cylinder. So I can, I'll just go ahead and do a few more bridges. Um, let's go ahead and bridge these faces together. Hit the bridge command. And you can see, even if I'm in smooth mode, the preview's in box mode, but that's, that's okay. You can see now I'm, I've bridged that together. Um, go ahead and finish this off. And let's see, select these two and bridge it. One option we have in bridge is the option to add a twist to the surface. So right now the twist is at zero. I can change this to maybe one, and you can see how it will do a complete twist. If you change the segment, sometimes it it will give you a better looking surface because it will give you more isocurves to work with in the twist. You can see that will give me a complete twist when I connect those. Um, I'm going to hit the, the three hotkey to make a smoother mesh. You can see how that mesh preview looks better. And then also, you can see how the isoparm distance is not very uniform after, the, um, after I've been bridging. I can do, use the make uniform command by right clicking on this icon. And that will just make the surface more uniform and space those isoparms more evenly and get me a really nice, some really nice transitions there. Um, so if I decide I don't want to have this twist here, because it really makes no sense, I'll just uh, hit tab to go back to box mode, select these faces, hit delete, select these faces, just hit the delete key. And then I can use the fill hole command to fill these holes and then just uh, go back to the, um, let's see, where is that angle to? Go back to the bridge command and um, undo the twist, go back to five segments, and I can uh, hit tab to go back to smooth mode and have this be more uniform there. One other thing you can do with the bridge command is, say I want to have some uh, some curves, like maybe a, a, a column of faces that are kind of curved. See, let me try that again. From this face to this face. I can lay down a curve and then use the bridge command to follow that curve. So I'll just select this face, select that face, and uh, you can use the bridge command. And this time I can use the follow curve option click on the curve, and you can see now what the, the column of faces is following that curve. So I can, I can increase the number of segments, and it will maybe give it more degrees of freedom to follow the curve better. And then it will go ahead and, and apply the bridge like that. Um, I can, it, if I want that same bridge to be over here, then I can, um, I, I can use that same curve. I don't need to move it. I'll just click the, the faces where I want the bridge to go, do the bridge command again, 
and uh, say follow curve, just click this curve and it will move that curve over here. And then I can use the arrow to kind of switch the direction of the curve. I can use this wheel to change if it's pointing up kind of where the curve will be. And then um, just hit enter and it will create um, the surface following that curve over here. So that's the new bridge command. It looks like I had it flipped. I could have flipped it the other way. And that's one way that you can use it. The final example that we'll show with our webinar is introducing one other way of, of creating T-spine surfaces that's new with version 2. We'll be making this uh, car fender. And the way that we're going to start is by, let me just hide this. We'll be using these four key curves that kind of describe the shape of our surface. Now, the, the, the new functionality that we'll be showing here is to be able to extrude um, with the T-spines manipulator. So I can just select this curve, have make sure that the manipulator's on, and then if I hold down Alt, the Alt key, and then drag the manipulator, you can see that it's actually growing the surface as I'm just dragging the different parts of the manipulator. So I can even drag these disks and it will pull it in this plane, and then drag the manipulator to bring it up. And um, you can see it's, it's, it's almost kind of like a dynamic loft that just lets you create the surface from these curves. So I'll go to the different uh, viewports and just extrude all these curves. So here in the top, I'm just holding down Alt and dragging the curve. Let's drag it a couple times to create the surface there. I'll come in the right viewport and again, just hold down Alt and I'm just dragging the manipulator to show how we can uh, create the surface there. One other way to create surface using this, this new functionality is to use like the, uh, the scale or the rotate manipulator. So I'm going to hit E to change to the rotate manipulator. Then I'm going to hit the T hot key so I can place the pivot point of the, of the manipulator here. Now as I hold down Alt and drag this ring, I am extruding the surface and it's in this uh, kind of rotational fashion. So it's, it's extruding it and rotating it at the same time. So you can see just using that new command, it's really easy to, just, to quickly generate these main components of our surface. So I'm going to hit tab to switch to box mode and um, just move some of these control points. Just move these down. Let's see. Actually, let me just select all these curves and just delete them. Um, then I can move these control points over. Let me just check to make sure how these are all lining up. Let me, if I, if I double click in edge, it will select the whole edge loop. I think I'm going to pull that back. I can double click to select the edge loop. Oops. Pull that back. Just going to make sure this is underneath that blue surface. And now that I have these in place, I'll use that same bridge command that, that Kyle was showing um, and that I was showing earlier, but now I'm going to use it for bridging edges. So I'll just select these two edges, use the bridge command, and um, change the segments to three, and I'll just hit enter. So you can see it's now bridged those two surfaces. Now I'll select these three edges and I'll bridge them to these three edges, and you can hit the bridge command. Um, this time I'll change the segments to one, because I just want one edge going across there, or one new face. And now I need to bridge uh, this gap. And there's a couple different ways to do this. First I can just uh, do crossing selection and bridge this, this part together, and um, just one segment. And then I have this triangular hole, and again triangles are, be, are to be avoided, but sometimes you can avoid them, and that's, that's okay. So let's use the fill hole to fill that triangular hole. Um, the second way to, to close this kind of crevice, though, is to just, inside the bridge command, select all the edges on the one side, then hit enter, select all the edges on the other side, hit enter, and it will fill, fill that all in. The, the final thing to do is to close this gap, and again, we'll use, just use the bridge command, so I'll double click to select this whole edge loop. And one thing to be careful with when you are using the bridge command is you need to have the same number of edges on both surfaces that are being bridged together. So we've laid this out carefully so that uh, there's 13 edges on there and then 13 edges on, on the other, and you can see we have, with our heads at display, we can see we have 26 edges total selected. 
then just bridge this together and uh, it closes that up. Then I'll hit tab to go to smooth mode and um, you can see that we've created, able to, uh, to, to join those all together. Again, there's a little bit of pinching here going on and that can be smoothed out again using this make uniform command. So that's by right clicking on here and that's a command that's good to use whenever you have some sort of pinching going on with your surface. You can see how that smooths that out a little bit better. Um, I'm just going to change the uh, change the shading here so it's black. It's a little bit easier to see. Now what I'll do is is turn on symmetry. So turn on symmetry, and I want it in the uh, x direction. So let's hit enter. So we'll apply symmetry now. So now whatever I do on one side of the model will be updated on the other side. So I can, um, for instance, take a look here, and I I was I haven't been super careful laying this out, and so I kind of have a curl here. So I'm going to turn on my control points by hitting A and just select these control points and then position my cursor up here and use the Rhino set point command and position, set them in Y. And so that just allows me to straighten that out easily. Um, now one thing I'd like to do is add an intake valve here. So I'll hit D, the D hot key to select my faces. And then this extrude built into the, into the manipulator works on faces as well. So let's hold down Alt and drag the manipulator, you can see that that will just extrude those faces inwards. So I'll repeat that, just hold down Alt and drag the manipulator again, and it will pull, um, again, add, make this extrusion. You can delete T-spline spaces to make a hole in the model just by hitting the delete key. So I'm just going to hit delete, and it will delete those holes. And uh, now I'll just hit S to go to select my edges and double click to select that loop. You can see that this is kind of a, kind of has some funky curvature going on there. There's a few ways to straighten that out. One is to use set point on the control points. The other way is to hit the R hot key to come to my scale manipulator and just drag this box to scale in 1D and you can see how that kind of flattens out that, uh, that edge. Since this is an editable, a single editable surface, then I can, I can uh, still move these edges. So if I want to change how the model comes in to this intake valve, I can just select these edges and just drag them inwards to, to change how the model comes into this opening. So that gives me some, the ability to, to play around with iterations. And of course, whatever I'm doing on this side is being updated on this side. With symmetry, you can work on either side of the model. So now if I want to delete some of these faces, I'm just going to hit, hit uh, the paint selection. So just click this. Then I can just drag and hold and drag to select these faces. Um, and then hit the delete key, and it will delete faces on both sides of the model. One thing to be aware of when you're deleting T-spline spaces is if you leave a concave corner like this in the, in the surface, then it will kind of shoot creases out into the surface. Um, that's usually not desirable, but one way you can solve that is I'm just going to select um, these edges and, um, and extrude them inwards. And so by extruding that inwards, then it will create a lip and then that concave corner is no longer on the edge of the surface. So you can see it's no, there's no longer a sharp corner there. And so that smooths out the model. Um, so at this point, we can continue to optimize our model. But whenever we want to, we can convert to NURBS. So just right click on the Convert to NURBS button. Hit Enter, and this T-spines will be turned into a poly surface. So I can uh, you just make that a little more clear to see the boundaries of the NURBS. And there's the, there's the T-spine model converted to NURBS. So those are the new commands in T-spines version 2.2 that we wanted to introduce to you. You can download T-spines version 2.2 right now in our form. It's in beta, and it should be out just in a few days. But feel free to play with that now. And um, that is the end of the webinar. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, there's Kyle's contact info if you want to get a hold of him. And now we just have a few minutes to answer any, any questions that have not been answered. And then we'll send out an email with uh, any questions that we don't get to. So do we have any other questions, Tom? OK, so there's a question. How about the end gun at the bottom of the hood? 
why doesn't that cause a problem? So that's going back to Kyle's part of the, of the demo. Um, with T-splines, it is possible to have N-gons in the surface. They, they are not as smooth as the rest of the, as, as the surface. They'll be G1 smooth, um, so tangent continuous. So this, the surface just behaves as though there's a star point in the middle of the N-gon. So avoid them if you can, but if you can't, then, that, then, then it will be fine, and that's kind of the, the surface quality that you will have. Okay, is that about all the, so it looks like Tom's been busy on the keyboard answering the rest of the questions, so um, thanks everyone for attending, and let's see, there's, there's one more question, can we get a NURBS preview before converting or generate a simplified NURBS output? Um, yes, there is a way to change how the T-spline splits out into NURBS, and that can be done using the, um, the the set surface layout button. So by right clicking on this, define regions for T-spline conversion to NURBS. Um, if you uh, you can click on that icon, and then this allows you to to show how the T-spline will be split into NURBS. So we don't have a choice; it will be split along every leg of the star point. So those have to be the borders. But then you can double click and and kind of draw on the surface to show how the T-spline will be converted to NURBS. So that's one way that you can um, you can control that. Um, okay, well, great. We'll uh, we'll st stay on the line just for a few minutes. So feel free to type any more questions in, and we'll send those out over email. But thanks for attending, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next webinar.